Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Charlotte. And to all you mothers out there, have a wonderful, happy Mother's Day from all of us to you. Today, I'm your host, Alan. If this is your first time, we are delighted that you have chosen to join us today. We are extremely grateful for this opportunity to touch so many people and to share the wonderful happenings here at CSL Charlotte. So, please feel free to visit, visit our website, cslcharlotte.org. Put in a prayer request and subscribe. We add our recordings to our website each week. So, let me tell you a little bit about who we are. The Center for Spiritual Living Charlotte is a new thought community living in ancient wisdom philosophy based on the science of mind. This science of mind philosophy was developed in the early 20th century by writer and lecturer Ernest Holmes. Dr. Holmes was a man on a mission. He studied truths from all of the world's religious traditions and spiritual paths. Holmes developed a fresh, new way for us to look at ourselves and how we fit into our world. So let me tell you a little bit about what we, what we do here. At CSL Charlotte, every philosophy is honored along with every race, sexual orientation, and physical distinctions. This is a diverse community. There are many paths and ways to get to the divine. We can call it God, peace, love, or spirit. But whatever you call it, that is your power that resonates within you, and you can align to that power at any time. You do not have to leave your philosophy or nature of knowledge. You can join us anytime. We recognize and refer to many holy scriptures, such as the Bible, the Quran, the Dhammapada, and the Bhagavad Gita, just to name only a few. So let me tell you about our vision here. Our vision statement is to continue a spiritual community creating and preparing a succession of future leaders who can fully integrate, teach, and expose the science of mind principles, messages, and practices that strengthen the mind, body, and spirit of individuals and as us as a community. One of our aims is to create a high pledge of consciousness for everyone in this community. We teach everyone the tools to do just that. So come and join us as we meet each Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And our theme for today is inner and outer alignment. And the person who knows the most about, about alignment is your car mechanic. <laughs> because we have because our your car has inner and outer tie rods, which controls the, the movement of your tires, whether they move left or right. And if they're not aligned right, that C that CV boot goes pop. So, and it's just like a metaphor of lives, where it'd be aligned on the inner and outer. So you can so you can smoke cruise, so you can cruise smoothly on life's highways, feel full, living all of life's adventures. <laughs> so welcome everyone. And enjoy our service as we celebrate this powerful being that is you and me. So now I will pass the mic back over to our fabulous spiritual leader, Reverend Rosedale. Wow. You know, this dude, my right hand man, he is phenomenal. He's always, he gave us a brief uh, education on what we're talking about today. Not only did he do that, he did, he used a nice scenario to help us understand. I did not know it would go pop if you didn't get a wheel alignment. <laughs> so that means if you don't get your body aligned, your, your life will go pop. <laughs> I love it. So anyway, happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful mothers, myself, and the world. And if you're on YouTube and you're watching it that day, whatever day you're watching it, make it Mother's Day because Mother's Day is every day. So this is CSL Charlotte and in celebrating the integration of the mind, the body, and the spirit, we at CSL Charlotte, we open our Sunday celebration service with an affirmative prayer. So... Our affirmative prayers being done by our emeritus spiritual practitioner, Maureen Thurston, a.k.a. Mo. And Mo gets your prayer requests when you submit them on our website. Hit, hit. She, csl.org. 
she sends one to me and to you. Then the three of us knows your highest and greatest good through affirmative, affirmatively reading your prayer. So you probably already know what comes next is this. If you haven't received your prayer request by email, you have not put in a prayer request. So do go to cslcharlotte.org today and put in your prayer request. Everybody can have a prayer, whether it's something you are excited to have or something that you want to have or something you want to end. <laughs> but it's a prayer. So guys, that's who does it here at CSL Charlotte. So we are in for a treat because she's the heartbeat of CSL Charlotte by keeping our prayers in line. So with that being said, Mo, open it up and let us get going. All right. Thank you. So let's just take a brief moment here and turn within to that nice, still, quiet place where we find the centeredness and the groundedness that allows us to go through each and every day. And as I know that as we step into this service today, that the message that Reverend Rosedale shares with us reaches and touches us in that heart, in our mind, and in our soul. For she always comes from the heart in everything that she does. And so as I know that this service runs smoothly and easily, that the music is perfect and the message is perfect, I welcome all of us here to celebrate Mother's Day, to be celebrated, and to celebrate. So as we go into this service, I know that we are each and every one of us blessed that we find and hear what we need to hear and we take it into heart and it is all done with ease and grace and so it is. And so it is. Great. So thank you, Mo. What a beautiful opening prayer we got going on. Now, next on our platform is our reader, Dereva Trailer, aka JT. Now, I was in my Thursday night yoga class this past week, and we are all, you know, we're both facilitators, she and I. I like to say facilitators now. It's a different way for me, right? So she was happened to be reading this reading at the end as I'm so nice and poised. And I heard some words in there that made me stand up on my toes. That's how, I, but really not, you know, in my mind, I did that because I'm, I'm always relaxed after her, after her yoga. But anyway, I thought to myself, I want everybody to feel this charge on Sunday. So I said to her when we got finished, that's Sunday's reading. Now, if you don't hear this, oh my God, please listen to her reading. It's for you. It's for you. It's designed for you. Pull those words into your power because that's what you are. So after JT's reading, I invite you to listen to the song, The Power of Now by Faith Rivera. Now you'll begin to understand a lot more about what inner and outer alignment is really all about today and carry it into your next week. Now I invite you to take the words of JT's reading and take this song to the heart and prepare yourself for the talk, inner and outer alignment. So JT, make it do what it do. Thank you, Reverend Rosedale. Good morning, all, and happy Mother's Day. Today's reading is a poem titled Hello World by Dan Coppersmith. I am amazing, incredible me, celebrating the being I choose to be. I'm uniquely spectacular. I am one of a kind. Creativity oozes from my heart and mind. I'm stupendous, tremendous. I stand out from the crowd. I do things that aren't allowed. I'm inspired, desired. I am wonderfully weird. I'm unbridled passion. I am highly revered. 
I'm outrageous, contagious. I am daring and bold. I am honored and cherished. I am a treasure to hold. I am gifted, uplifted. I am endlessly blessed. I am sought out for the skills I possess. I am delightful, insightful. I am loving and adored. I live a charmed life. I am renewed and restored. Hmm. I am grateful, elateful. I am centered and wise. I am wealthy and worthy. I am God in disguise. I declare my brilliance. It won't be denied. The world cries out for what I provide. I am powerful, masterful. I am focused and clear. Life becomes brighter because I am here. I am blazing, amazing. I can't be contained. I am a glorious, fabulous, radiant flame. I choose to exude all this and much more. My wings are spread. Watch me soar. And so it is. Power of now. Oh, breathe in really, really, really deeply as you just say that to yourself, the power of now. And just as you exhale, just think and remember what Rivera's Faith Rivera's words are. See, because here's the deal about the power of now. There is nowhere we need to be, but where we are. There in also, there is no, there's nothing that we need to be, but who we are. Yes. Oh boy. I just love those words. And did you hear the words of being restored come out of that reading? Just listen to those words and hear yourself. And this week, use the power of now to start that aligning your inner and outer worlds because in order to live in harmony with yourself inner and outer alignment is necessary so prepare for the talk and wiggle your fingers and your toes somebody had me doing that yes oh there was something we were doing yesterday shauna was there okay got it because i was like oh i can remember so many things that go on during the day and i'm just getting so excited about life but anyway before you really get back into the service, integrate your mind, your body, and your spirit. And just look around your space as though this is the first time you've ever been in it. Your car, your room, your living room, wherever you are. While I take a brief gratitude moment and first give thanks to our fabulous, my fabulous right-hand man, that MC man today. Big A, Allen, the A team, right? And also, I want to thank JT for that reading because it was spot on. What it did was it should have. Well, it's, I'll tell you what it did for me. It has definitely got me on my toes. Now, if you didn't get on your toes, you got on something because you heard some words that really resonated with your soul. So thank you, JT. And to this awesome Emeritus Mo, spirit, Emeritus Spiritual Practitioner Mo, <laughs> thank you, darling, for that beautiful prayer. It really opened the door to our inner and outer alignment so far. So meanwhile, what we're going to do is continue holding the light over this wonderful, beautiful service that's unfolding so well. So. Let's keep it moving. Now, our talk title is, as you've heard from me and Alan, Inner and Outer Alignment. So let me just uh, take a minute to, to, to thank my scientists. I, you know I love my scientists. But anyway, science has so much proof that the inner and outer line, the inner and outer worlds complement each other. Oh, my God. They have proof of it. That's the truth. And nothing but the truth. Here's what I know. I reached a point in my life where I am constantly wondering and pondering and 
I like it. And one of the biggest things I did this week was I said, how can I be congruent in my inner and outer world since they complement each other? And you know what? I thought about after pondering a long time is this is what you will know. You know that you stay woke. I like to say that I stay woke. And eventually I become open and receptive to that power within me which is in that moment, that now moment. And then I allow myself to feel this sense and, and, and experience. And I also feel this power for energy while it's knowing that it's around me and everywhere. And it even shows me answers in one way or another. See, when we are aligned with spirit, source energy, the universe, God, your choice, we manifest our desired outcomes and we gain clarity about our life. All you gotta do is get aligned. You know what? As spiritual beings having a human experience, or should I say living a human experience, we possess internally through our thoughts and emotions. No, we don't possess, we process through our inner internal thoughts and emotions and and we express outwardly as we attract others in our lives or objects into our lives so inner is attracting outer outer cannot attract inner because everything comes from the inside out so i'm not going to tell you that part now feeling um when you're feeling genuine in your inner world it makes you feel so and be more charming. I like it because being in, when I'm feeling genuine and, and actually happy, I'm just a wonderful, I'm peachy keen with everything and everybody, you know? So when we are authentic and genuine, we tend to be more confident, comfortable in our own skin. You know what? Think about it. Just try it. I do it so often. Before I leave out of my house, I'm always coming out of here the way I want. I have to take a shower first. I guess many people don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, you know, once I do all that and just wake myself up, I'm ready. And so as I express outwardly, I guess, like I said, I know this is what's happening in my life because I can't tell you that it's happening to you until you accept that. So I have to say, we are or I am authentic and I'm genuine so I can't help but to draw people to me so why not get my inner and outer alignment straight before I walk out of the house one way or another I'm either going to watch something on YouTube I'm either going to pull up a spiritual practice I'm either going to read something I want to read you see I know from experience that whether we know it or not that this universe is making changes for us and better hold on. So therefore I get aligned the minute I find myself off track. One of the things I realize now is that people are being attracted to me and have been attracted to me throughout my entire life to get me here today. It could be happening for you too. Just stay woke. If you choose to, if you choose to believe that, you see, finding balance between your inner and outer fields is the key to your spiritual growth, to manifestation, and all those life desires that you could possibly have. It's a journey that requires commitment and patience, but the rewards, oh my God, are so worth it. See, I want to tell you about both inner and outer for a second. Both of them, both inner and outer, provide us with information. Ooh, ooh. Information, color, uh, also flavor to the whole, whole experience of our life. See, another thing about the inner and the outer is they have this depth. I got to say this word right. Depth and, and it's very extensive. And though that depth and extensiveness shapes our inner world so that we can experience our outer realities. 
Now they're both necessary for our growth and evolution. And our inner and outer worlds, they work harmoniously together when we're in alignment. See, they create a healthy partnership as we live through our experiences. Now, that knowing, this is what you got to do. You got to sure up yourself. Now, you heard JT's reading, how we get restored. All you have to do is think in that way. But I want you to know that ultimately what her reading is actually telling us all is that you are uniquely special, a, a, a uniquely special being, that you have unique gifts worth celebrating, that you are loved, that you are brilliant, that you are a perfect expression, expression of the universe. Oh my God. If you don't know that now, you know it today because I'm telling you who you are. And I believe this about me and I live up to it. What about you? If you plan on living up to all of who you are, then it's time to learn how to align that inner and outer worlds together. So this way, you know how you do this? Through spiritual practice. And also, if you want to, you can go check on some of those scientific uh, YouTube channels to talk to you all about you. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean just those people shouting out, hey, you can be. No, I mean to, to show you the science of how this thing works, how the light inside of our bodies is connected to whatever is surrounding us. So you won't be lying to yourself about, oh, there's a God in the sky with this long beard and he's doling out favors and I'm going to be good so I can get that. No, you got to start forgetting all that you learned when you grew up. It's your own horn. I, I pat myself on the back. Well, you're not supposed to do that either. You are, you as a mother, you as a parent, you are phenomenal. That's why we get so tired of playing small at some point when we live in life from day to day. See, I started out my spiritual journey uh, with doing things like a day in the life and meditation. Those were my first two heavy duty tools uh, back in the eighties or so. Now those, that's all I knew then because I didn't know about all the, the big practices and the big communities and stuff. There were two things that I did know. And I did that on a fluke because I said, this is helping me. I used to go to Barnes and Noble back in the 80s, 70s or the 80s, right? And I would uh, get a cup of coffee, get a whole bunch of books. Back in the day when I was I was learning to be an entrepreneur, I would I have a I am an entrepreneur at heart. So what happened is what back there I used to grab these books because they were talking about self improvement. So back then that was their buzzword. And they had this book called Dianetics that I remember seeing, I think back in that day. And I still didn't understand Dianetics, you know, but it was uh, uh, intriguing, that book. I don't know. I bet you some of y'all saw that book. But there was tons of books that I would pull down and, and sit there for hours alone in Barnes & Noble. So I think that the word spirit, uh, the word uh, self-improvement was actually really what they're trying to say back then, but spirituality was on the rise. Just right now, spirituality is on the rise because people like us in these communities throughout the world, in the CSL, any spiritual community is out talking to people and they're starting to wake up. Stay woke, y'all, because you are looked at in yourself every day, even though you ignore it at times. I think they were hinting on spirituality anyway. So I found out that there was a thin line back there between self-improvement and spirituality. But you know what helped me find contentment in my life back then is reading about spirituality and taking those and making those tapes. I used to make these, uh, they were cassette tapes then. I used to make these cassette tapes by those, I bought a big old uh, boom box that had the 
echoing stuff all, you know, and all that stuff. And it would be voiceover effects. And I would read things from Louise L. Hay, Wayne Dyer, and uh, Ernest. No, not Ernest yet, because I didn't hear about him yet, because I probably would have been in, there, in here by then. But all these different places I was learning. Then I started making them as a uh, police officer. I was taking care of the youth. I was in charge of their minds. What I felt like I was going to do was make these tapes for them when they run away from home, when they steal, when I find out they're doing drugs, when they're selling drugs, when they're in gangs, whatever they were doing. I said, all right, I'm going to talk to you. Okay, I talked to them. I said, tomorrow I'm bringing you something and you're going to do this for the rest of the week. And I would give them the meditation tapes. Do you know that I started, I, I didn't call it meditation tape either. I didn't call it anything. I just said, take one of these tapes. But when I came in here, I realized, oh, you're doing meditation. But anyway, long story short, kids were changing. But above all, guess who else was changing? I was changing. <laughs> That's the thing, man. Because see, because you know why? I had to change because this is what I was about. I was continuously blaming the religion I didn't understand in the first place back then. I was definitely in blame mode. And then I would find every other contradictory statement in the Bible. How could it be like this if this is what they're saying? How could it be like that, right? Oh, but see, what I needed was to see more of how that religion works in my life. And I could not find it then. I see it now, though. <laughs> I see it now. I felt more penalized by my religion more than anything else. I'm just being real with y'all, you know. And I always and all along, I was feeling wrong. All the things I was doing was wrong. When the inner world is mostly feeling wrong. How could I produce anything worthwhile in this world of my outer world anyway? That's what I, I, that's what I see from, um, from today and back then. I don't know. If I, I could have never made it if I had stayed in New York and just said, oh, I'm going to live like this. So therefore, my outer world was congruent with my inner world all the time. However, it wasn't in my favor. So your world and your book, it's always incongruent. Just let, let, I just need to let you know that. I need you to remind you that we have a fear side that we're congruent with or a love side all the time. And whatever I was in at that time, that was what I was producing. And my worlds were congruent with that. And you can't be mad about that. I just said, what did I say? The, the, the universe does it anyway, something like that. Well, yeah, whatever we do, we're, we're producing. The universe is producing right for us. So when I was feeling joy and I was feeling happiness, I was on the love side. When I was feeling uh, confusion, it's a lot of words that can go with that. Or when I was feeling angry or when I was feeling wrong, I'm on the fair side. So the match, you know, you know, you know, the match comes from where we are. So you're congruent all the time. So don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. But you want to be congru congruent where? On the love side. How do you do that? You begin to learn how to align with your spiritual practices. People who are aligned with their inner and their outer worlds, they exhibit these fabulous qualities. You can see it in them. Authenticity nurturing, vulnerability, empathy. These people, some of us in here, have a strong sense of purpose and we are very darn resilient. You might smack me today, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm getting up from that floor. See, how can we be congruent with our inner and outer worlds since they complement each other's for our spiritual growth. And I'm going to tell you this. In order to experience true spiritual growth, it's important to be in harmony with both inner and outer worlds. This requires looking for that balance in your life, being mindful of how our actions affect us. Oh, do I look 
I might snap you up the first right away as an instinct because that's Rosedale. But let me tell you something. I'm going to know when I do my reflection. It might be five minutes later. I may not could apologize yet, though. <laughs> Just keeping it real. You know, but it also involves being aware of how the my environment around me is. I have to be aware of my environment to keep my uh, my energy levels. So I'm not. Boom, boom, boom. I don't have to be that way, but at times it's not always easy to, to bounce back for everybody. Some of you can just go, okay, it's okay, but the, uh, but it's all good. So to get past our differences with circumstances, with places, even people, we have to use our spiritual practices to keep our inner world and our outer line, our outer world aligned, and let's respect respect some people. You see, on this Mother's Day, let's respect the word. Mom means something different to everyone. Some people, the word mom, mother, father brings pain. Okay? Don't judge them. And some people brings love. So many people see the word differently. So if you are on a path today and you are saying happy Mother's Day to people, be mindful who you're talking to and be mindful who you are looking or uh, frowning upon. But I don't think anybody else in here does that. But I've seen a conversation the other day with two people and she said, how can you say that about your mother? I was like, whoa, whoa, I got an earful about that. Whoa, interesting. But that's not my business, right? So I stay out of it. Sometimes with the pain part, though, some people just give so far into their pain that they don't realize they're the ones causing their pain. But with my clients, I show them by insights, by questioning, questioning them on how they feel when they say mother. I have a lot of clients who talk about issues with their parent, parents, mother or whatever. And my questions, my probing questions, before they even respond, they come out with their own insights from that. It, it helps them to relieve their pain. That's good to have a, co a coach for that. But then there's people who don't know this and they don't have a coach and they predict how long they're going to be in that pain. They can say something like, I feel my throat is scratchy. I won't be able to work tomorrow. That's a prediction. And guess what side they're congruent on with their inner and outer world? So what you're allowing your outer world to dictate to you, better pay attention. I'm asking you, what are you allowing your outer world to dictate to you? Because that cold or whatever is going to get just that much worse because you said, I, you, when you said that word, you decided that you're going to be in the bed. You went to see that vision of you being in the bed. So just know that everything we we do from in here, it's displayed out there. So no one should ever be judged in their. No one should ever be judged in their, by other people if their differences, if they have differences about their mother. We should never. We should just respect that. Learn to talk to them, and many people I end up doing prayer work with. See, and then, and then also, I'm able to show them the examples of, of mothers. Say, some mothers are actually congruent with their inner and their outer alignment on the love side. Then that person begins to see that they can see the, themselves as the mom that they wanted to, as the mom. They, they can see themselves as the mom that they wanted their mother to be. So you be that. So we turn it around so their pain for mother is now subsided because now they took on that, that congruency in their world and they are happy because they understand. And you know what? That even causes forgiveness. So holidays are tough for so many people. Let's remember that. 
no matter what holiday we are. I just wanted to remind people of that because a lot of times that's it. So I challenge you this week to remember that life has its ups and especially its downs. But when we are focused on aligning our inner and outer worlds, oh my God, we are on fire. We all that in a, in a bag of chips that that uh, JT said in her reading. Got to listen. So here's the next song. I want to tell you a little something about that. When we're interested in transforming our lives into something greater, we have things right. You know why? They're already right. But you got to see it right, not fix it. So. When we see things right, everything falls into place. And it all happens right while we're in the middle of a particular journey most of the time. We got thousands of journeys. We still got billions more to, to go on. Oh, I'm just loving it. I'm looking for it. All you do is shift from where you are and bring them two together, the inner and outer world and do your spiritual practice. So with this next song, listen to Yolanda Adams as she sings, I Gotta Believe. Oh yeah, I, don't like, I wish I could sing like her. <laughs> but, but you know what? I can do it, I can do it. I believe that I can make it with my head held high. You heard my girl. Guys, can you hear her? Can you believe that you can make it? Are you are you listening that she said that it wasn't only that she believed, she's saying that not only does she have to believe that she can see herself at the finish line, right, of this journey. And can you just see yourself standing at the end of that, that week or whatever, holding that, that prize with you, standing, smiling? You see it right. You don't set it right. That's the real way you believe through your vision, but I think I'm done. So <laughs> I just get so excited. I love that song. I love that woman. What I am doing is saying, woohoo, a community that stays together, prays together. And Mo, thank you so much for all of those prayers that you put out for us. Yes, indeed. All right, that all said, I want you to, to know that we have such a powerful group of people. But before I tell you all of that, do you know that? To, this is the time when we celebrate people's birthdays. Now, I would like to um, to actually find out something. If you have a birthday, <laughs> which I'm sure you do, would you jot that birthday down in, if you're listening to YouTube, would you jot that birthday down in there so we can have a birthday every single week? The goal is to have a birthday to celebrate every week. And as much as we're moving through this city and moving through other cities, oh, we're going to make that happen. So you can look at it now and say, oh, yeah, okay. But honey, I'm telling you, I see it. What did we do? I believe that I can make it. I see the end of the road. And then once we get to that end of the road, you know, we're going to be looking for another one. So, hey, let's move it. So I just want to say, take a moment to give us your birthday. You know your birthday and I don't. So that all said, I want you to really think about considering donations because at CSL Charlotte, we are expanding. We don't just sit on our hands. Our next vision is to is we're going hybrid. At, and that means that we're going strictly from online spiritual community to a hybrid one where we'll have the facility to do all of our 
technology that we're doing here so we can keep our loved ones that we got here already coupled with the people in person. Oh man, I see that so beautifully as I go and we go and look at these wonderful places and Alan and I go check on the technology. Oh man, y'all, we are there. So we are constantly finding ways to deepen our impact and spread the true spirituality from CSL Charlotte. You know, we're looking um, at a studio right now, and it's, it's, a, it's a thing to start us off until we find that space that represents CSL Charlotte with no holes barred. And you know what that means? That means that there are no restrictions, no limitations on what we do or say. That means we can schedule all our events and classes without needing to, to ask somebody, is it okay? You know, we also have it so that we can show people that all you got to do is know it and you can have whatever your vision that you choose to hear, listen to. Okay. So it looks like the way we're looking that this is just what we got a wonderful, beautiful place, but we're starting out somewhere and we're going to let you know more about that one. But for the big thing, we would like for you to consider continuous donations to keep coming in to CSL Charlotte. Okay. So that all said, guys, thank you in advance for your donations. So I need to thank for oh, oh, my whole my whole wonderful team, but I need to thank my fabulous MC, uh, the A team, Alan. You know this guy has come so far in the past two years, and that prayer man, he rocked it. And then he's he, he's always talking about food. You ever notice that the cake? Oh my goodness! You know he just who who else? So it's a funny thing, though, when two people are together under the same spirit, because we were wild in here. So that's why we had to come to back to normal. <laughs> I had to mute myself, but it's all good now. But great job on that. And oh, for our reading, JT, fabulous reading. I hope you all heard that loud and clear who you are. And thanks, Timmy P, for those informative announcements. I suggest that you all go out there and check out our YouTube. Oh my God, that thing is so professionally done. Woo, woo. You would think you was looking at a show. And then while you're at it, support your, your own community, right? Go uh, and subscribe to the channel. You, you don't have to watch it every week, but just go out there and see what, you, what, what your community is doing instead of just letting us tell you, oh, yes, like that. Go check it out. And thank you, Groovy G, for keeping everyone informed in the chat. You need to go check out our sound over there, too, because, girl, it's you who's doing this. Thank you for keeping our sound in check and all that wonderful stuff that you do behind the scenes. And thank you again in advance, oh, J JT, because you are doing the prayer room tech. Yes, indeed. So, and thanks for that great prayer mode from you to open us up in this wonderful and then to close us out because I know you're going to do that in a powerful way as well. And let me just remind you, since I'm speaking of prayer, if you have not put in, received a prayer from Mo, you have not put in a prayer request. So, woohoo! So, I thank you all for being on this platform and doing what you do to make this, this, this whole thing turn out so well. Thank you all. So what else do we need to say? Anything else, Alan, that we need to get done? Oh, and Melissa, thank you for, you know what you do, the spotlighting, because you need to see what our YouTube looks like too, because the way this thing looks, it really is good. It's your spotlighting is also helping us out too. So each and every one of us are doing things in this community. And we're making moves. We're making moves, right? So remember that if you'd like to have a live prayer after this service, because it's going to be going on, even when we're hybrid, we will know it. But we have to do it three minutes because when it grows to be so many people, we need to honor the fact that people are waiting, number one. Number two, we want to respect our time and other people's time. So let's do that. We can do it, and it can easily be done. So every week that you decide to take part in this live prayer, uh, you don't have to worry about, oh, I got these all these things. You could say, I'm coming back as much as I want. You can do that. And once we're done, once you're done with that prayer, you walk away feeling so good, especially on this wonderful Mother's Day. So 
with no holes barred. I like that. I like that. So now we're getting ready to, to talk about closing out, right? So remember uh, 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 your inner and your outer alignment as we think about this week, what we got going on this week. Always look before the week start, before the day start for where you're going. Because, you know, if you ask me and call me and say, Rosa, what's the direction to your house? I got to ask you what? Where you go? Where you at? So this way, if you know where you at in the morning or the, or the, or the beginning of the week, you, you know where you want to go, but know where you at too. So that's the inner and the outer alignment. And I challenge you to remember that alignment this week because that's what it's really all about. And one more thing before Mo prays us out. And here's something else. Um, about the inner and outer alignment. When you are in alignment, all that is that is happily understood is all yours. If you understand how powerful you are and how great you're going to have that thing at the end of the week, at the end of that journey, journal, journey, you got it. You can bulldoze your way, as Ruby said, through life unashamed of how great you are because you heard the reading and I want you to remember this one stanza that Groovy that JT read and that was I'm delightful insightful I'm loved and adored I'm I live a charmed life I'm renewed and restored remember you got to come back with something when you're Day is going crazy. So now for our last song, remember the I am, because that's what she did. She, she JT read I am to you. Those are I am statements that you got to live with. And she sent you the, the reading, some of you who asked for it. So if you want it, she will send it to you. So now our last song brings us to the land of I am. So in the land of I am, I want you to hear the words and take them in before we go this week and see that you are all that you are. You are all that you will be, and you are more than you are. So remember that before we leave today. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. And I'm thinking I'm finished. I don't have to do all that right now. But anyway, let's hear that last song. In the land of I am, I am more than I have been. I am more than I will be. I am all that I am. What are you? Are you all that you have been? Are you more than you will be? Are you all that you are? Remember, that's who you are. Yo, yo, yes. Hey, and now it's time. And, uh, and, and Mo is up for our prayer, right? She's going to pray us out. You are the bomb. You are the bomb diggity. So, all right. So, <laughs> so Mo is going to pray. You us are out. so funny. <laughs> I love you so much, Rosedale. <laughs> oh. oh, goodness sakes. All right. And so, as we close out this amazing service today, I do know that each and every one of us here have been blessed by this community, by the love that you can feel permeating through the wires. I know that as we go into this beautiful Sunday, celebrating those mothers that contribute to our lives, celebrating the fathers who step in and take the place of mothers when needed. For we are blessed by all of it. I know that this day is fruitful. I know that our lives are filled with joy, with laughter, with love, as we surround ourselves with that divine love of spirit. So as I release this and let it go, I know that this service has been blessed. I know that each and every one of us goes into this day with a lighter heart, with joy, with love, with laughter, and with that sense of celebration. So as I release and I let go, I call this service blessed. I call it done. And so it is. And so it is. So guys know that we are blessed. We're blessed beyond measure. We got a lot of laughter to do today. 
So if you can't think of nothing, pick on somebody in your party today, because you know everybody's with somebody today. You know, so pick them, pick on them and tease them and do whatever you got to do. Start the little laughter. And I know J- JT does that well with her mother. <laughs> and that be that all be saying here, guys, we're getting ready to close out. And I want us to make sure that we enjoy the rest of this day, but not just today do we want to think about being aligned. We want to try to remember. Am I in alignment today? 